Hey everybody, this is Dan with Pain Free You. Today I have the pleasure of introducing Morgan from Ohio. And uh, Morgan was gracious enough to volunteer her success story, share it with the world. Um, so welcome, Morgan. I really appreciate you doing this. And Thank uh, you. correct me if I'm wrong, but I, I don't know. Were you in any of my paid programs? Either? I didn't. I watched your videos kind of daily for probably a year, um, but I didn't ever pay. <laughs> Which is fine, which is fine. And I really want to point that out to the people watching because I get a lot of people going, but I can't afford it or the schedule doesn't work or whatever. I have a lot of people, probably half of the success stories I've recorded uh, never paid me a dime. We're never a part of the formal program. And I think that's just awesome. Because yeah, we appreciate it. <laughs> it's just awesome because I just want people to get better. And if they want more help, they can, you know, join the group, but if they don't, you can get better anyway. And Morgan, you're a great example of that. So why don't you tell me a little bit about it? Because we haven't worked together, I don't really know your story. So why don't you share with me kind of, kind of in this format, what symptoms started? Mm -hmm. Was there anything crazy going on in your life at the time? Chaotic, stressful, all that. How long you spent in the medical world? I'm mm -hmm. sure you've spent a good bit of effort trying different things. And we don't have to get into the details. I actually had one person start to say, well, first I went here and then they described the appointment and we don't have to go quite that deep. Sure. Um, but tell me what happened there when you finally heard about this mind body concept, yeah. whether or not you were like open to that or you were like, ah, that's hogwash. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, what you've tried in that realm, what really made the difference for you. And, you know, if you can, Kind of point people in the right direction as to the main things that really helped you. That would mm -hmm. be great. Um, I will try. <laughs> and if I see any opportunity to make a point or, you know, a, a teaching opportunity, I may jump in. Mm -hmm. So I'll do that if I see there's an opportunity. But in any event, why don't you tell us a little story? It's story time. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I um, got COVID back in... Um, Oh my gosh, November of 2020, I guess it was, um, right when it like kind of came out. Um, and my life was very chaotic. I um had had a baby in March of 2020, like right during when COVID started. So I okay. delivered during all that. And then we moved from California to Ohio with a five week old and um got we just bought a house and it was quarantined and my husband was starting a new stressful job and he was working like 12 hours a day and I was just home alone with this newborn, like by myself for months. And I was already kind of going crazy. And then I caught COVID. And um, that's when everything kind of like spiraled out of control. Um, prior to that, I was having like some mind body symptoms, but it was more like anxiety to me, like tremors and, you know, like aches and pains here or there, but I didn't, they didn't bother me. They weren't like debilitating or affecting my life at all. But then I got COVID and um, I just was really sick, like sicker than I ever was. And then my baby got COVID and she was not that sick, but I read all these articles about like babies that were really sick or were in all this pain. And, um, I just spent this night, like reading these articles while I was trying to fall asleep, which doesn't make much sense. And almost, um, immediately after that, I got just sicker than I'd been like violently ill. Um, all night in the bathroom, um, just with nausea and every, like, it was like beyond the COVID because my fever had already broken and I was like getting better. And then I read these articles and then I got sick again, like really sick. Mm -hmm. And I had to take my baby to the doctor the next day had like, I had no business probably even like walking around. I was so sick, but I like forced myself to take her. Sure. And, um, obviously cause she needed care. Right. And my husband was working and, um, anyways, after that we got home and I put her for a nap and that's kind of when everything like snapped and I started to get all these dizziness and I was just like, could barely walk. Um, and my husband got home and he was like, well, you just need to rest. Like, it's going to be fine. You're just sick and getting over COVID. And he kind of had already gotten better from his COVID, but I was just not getting better. Yeah. Um, but I got worse and a few days after that, I started having these like crazy heart rates. Um, so, and, um, 
I don't really know what had like possessed me to start checking my heart rates, but it just, um, I think I read something to like watch. And so my heart rate, every time I stood up would go up to like 150 and I was having palpitations and, um, just in regard to that, just tons of like anxiety, but, um, like about my heart rate. And so I called the ER and they were like, or I didn't call the ER. I called the doctor and he said, you have to go to the ER. And then that started the whole medical thing, but I got to the ER and they're like, there's nothing wrong with you, but you're dehydrated. So they said, well, the de dehydration is probably causing the heart rates and those should go away, you know, we'll hydrate you and you should feel better. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, and the heart rates didn't go away. And then I became obsessed with monitoring my heart rates. Mm -hmm. And then from there on, I went down a spiral of developing, I think like when I had counted, it was probably like 30 symptoms. Um, just the main ones though, were this intensive, like nausea and vomiting. So every morning I would wake up at about two in the morning with this crazy, like surge of nausea and acid reflux and stomach pain. And that would go on till about like nine in the morning and I would have to get up and take care of my baby. And then I would be dizzy. So I was essentially like crawling around because I couldn't really walk, trying to take care of my baby and do all this stuff. Wow. And the heart rates were going crazy and none, like no doctors care. Nothing's wrong with you. I went back to the ER a second time and they're like, why did you, why would you come back? And I'm like, because I'm really sick, but you know, like it, they didn't care that I couldn't walk around and they're like, you just need to drink a lot of water. But I was. So then that kind of escalated into like more fear, like, you know, nobody cares. I'm really, really sick and no one's going to help me. So it kind of like that exacerbated the whole fear of the, mm -hmm. the problem. Yeah, um, they're, mi they're missing something big. Yes. I was certain that they were. And I had found out about POTS like on my own and I'm a physical therapist and I was like, I have POTS, like I know that I have POTS. So I was able to get a referral to a cardiologist and they diagnosed me with POTS and they're like, oh, everybody gets POTS after COVID. Like, we don't know, you know, what to do about it. We'll give you these medications and like, maybe it'll go away. Maybe it won't. And good luck was basically kind of, we'll follow up with you in a few months. And um, so then they gave me these medications, which um, helped for like two days and then it got worse. And the nausea was like so intense that I was sick all day. I remember it was Christmas actually. And I was like, thought I was going to be better because I had started these medications and I'm like, I'm going to have Christmas. My baby's like, so it's going to be great. Right. And I was so sick Christmas. I couldn't even get out of bed. I couldn't walk the dizziness. My heart was going so fast. And then just, just, I couldn't keep anything down. So at this point, then it'd be like these two weeks periods where I couldn't keep anything down, just water and like, sips of smoothies and that was it and so I was losing I'd lost about 30 pounds at this point and they sent me to GI nothing's wrong with your stomach and like they didn't care I'm like but I've lost all this weight and they're like oh well you know like keep doing what you're doing and eat the smoothies and that was basically all the advice I got um so then I'm like well these people can't figure out what's wrong with me so I'm tr gonna try this naturopathy business um, so then naturopathy comes and tests all this stuff. And then they found like a hundred things wrong with me, which wow. was on like, you know, nothing though, that could really be like fixed. Like, oh, you're allergic to all these foods. Um, your microbiome's off. You have all this bad bacteria, all this stuff, you know, on and on and on. You clearly like have all these problems from childhood and you took birth control. So your gut is ruined and that made it worse. And then I, um, after doing all this with the naturopathy, that's when I started to develop all these food sensitivities. So then suddenly I was starting to get, like, I'd eat, like, you know, they told me dairy was bad. So then I'd eat dairy and I would get sick and my heart would go faster and faster and the dizziness and the nausea. And then sometimes I eat something, I'd be sick for like two weeks. And so it whittled down to a point where I can only eat about 30 foods, like including salt. I like, I counted them like salt and canola oil were one of them and not all oils. Cause I like, they told me I was allergic to olives. So then I couldn't have olive oil, but it was like, not only did they say it, then I would develop these reactions. Mm -hmm. Like, but I think it was cause they told me like, I, you know, it was just really bizarre. So I had this list of 30 foods and I was like, if I only do this, 
you know, I'm going to be healthy. And there was this weird thing in the COVID world about histamines. So I got terrified of eating histamines and that histamines aren't everything. Like, so I couldn't eat histamines and I'm like, well, if I only eat foods without histamines and I avoid all my allergies, I'm going to be healthy and I can go back to work. And I had that in my head. And so I did get better, like doing this really restricted diet. Mm -hmm. I got to like a functional point where I could walk around, like, you know, do things. And, um, then I tried to go back to work and the first day and it just all spiraled from there and everything came back in a horrible way. And I had, I had to resign, like I couldn't work. So I had to resign from that job. I just let them know I was too sick. Um, and then I started working with some other COVID doctors where they prescribed you like this cocktail of medicines. Um, and it was kind of the same thing. I got these medicines and like the first day I felt amazing and then like a few days into it it was like worse than ever um nausea abdominal pain all the you know things going on trouble yeah. with all the systems um and they told me I had like vascular inflammation and that what was ca causing like the widespread stuff that's why I had like every system was affected like my brain you know like all, all this stuff. Like it was like weird, like with the brain, they talk about brain fog. I didn't right. have it the way other people had it. I just felt like I was in this like sludge of like depression, like kind of like living in mud and like it, I don't know how to describe, but it was like everything um, was so thick. Get it. And the one day after I took those medications that went away and it was like seeing again. And then it, like, I lost it. And I was like, I was so frustrated at that point and like I felt like the medicines weren't going to work for me and um and this was maybe I'd been sick for I don't know maybe probably like half a year like seven to eight months at this point doing sure. this um and I took the medications for a while and at some point during this someone told me about Dr. Sarno and I was like okay she got better so I'm going to try to read this book and I read it and I'm like this totally makes sense, but I like, I don't know what my issue is. Like, yeah, I'm like, right, so this right. one lady got better because she realized her dad died and then she got rid of her depression and her back pain went away. I'm like, but I don't have that. So what's my issue? And so I'm like, well, I would like to do this, but I don't really know what to do. Um, so on and on, like, I kind of forgot about that, but then something pointed me towards Nicole Sachs mm -hmm. and I got into her Facebook group and started learning about that. And I did do the journaling, um, which I think was helpful, um, you know, to start with, to work some stuff out. Um, but then eventually it was just like, well, now I'm just journaling. I've journaled about everything. And now I'm just journaling about how much I hate still being sick. Um, so, and then it like, it also set up this routine, like I have to do this, like I have to journal, I have to do all this stuff, which was something for me that in the end wasn't that helpful. I had to kind of like discover that all these routines and management of my symptoms were actually keeping them there. Yeah. Um, so the more I like journal to try to make them go away, the more I meditated, it was like becoming a, you know, it was helpful at first, but then it started to become a chore. And um, but then so, it, was fear and, based. it was fear-based because then you start yes. to believe if I don't do it, then I'm never getting better. So I have to Correct. do it. Yeah, exactly. So I have to do this. Danger. Yes, that's so exactly that. And then the other things I had found were all these brain retraining programs where you do like, like stop. But, um, but they all like the way they describe it. First of all, they tell you like your brain is broken. And I'm like, I'm a physical therapist. So in my head, I thought, Oh, my gosh, I bet I've had a stroke. You know, my limbic system is broken. Like, I bet there's a stroke there that they've missed. And that's why I'm like, I have to cure it. But, you know, it just like, so it didn't help. That didn't help because that made me more terrified that something was wrong with my brain. Mm -hmm. And so then, I, and then they show people who do those exercises and get better in like a day. And I didn't. So I'm like, well, am I doing it wrong? So it was just all fear-based again. So everything I was doing was fear-based and I could go on with like lists, like of all these mind-body treatments I tried to do, but mm -hmm. all of them were fear-based because I was trying to get better, like trying Perfect. to get rid of the symptoms. Yeah, you're trying to fix um, yourself, which starts yes. with the premise that I'm broken. Right. And when the brain goes, oh, you're broken, mm -hmm. stay vigilant. Yes. Stay guard. Yep. So. And like taking like all these supplements from the, I was taking like maybe 75 supplements from the naturopath at one point. Yeah, like it was 75. 
I, I, it was so many. I, maybe not that many. It was so many supplements. Like, and I just um, so that was telling me I was broken. So um, I um, then I start. I worked with a coach for a while, mind body coach, because um, I was very certain that I had a mind body issue because of how I would get better, but then worse. And I actually did a recovery story with her because I thought I was better. Um, and that was about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And then I, um, after that, I went back to work and had some family trouble. And I had just a huge relapse after that and was just as sick as I ever was. Um, and it was very frustrating because I'd been so good. I had been like exercising, like cutting down bushes, like, you know, yard work, everything, taking care of my baby. And then the relapse about a year and a half ago was tough. And, um, I knew it was mind body and that I like could potentially, get better but I was like well maybe this is just like something that I have to live with like my nervous system is just too sensitive and every time I have a stressor I'm just going to be sick for two weeks and like I just have to accept that yeah. um so I went back to work um but this like at this point had put a pr pretty big strain on my husband and my family like you know just all that like I because I was obsessed with managing my disease. So I would like wake up and I'm like, well, I have to meditate before work. And then I have to cultivate this journal time. I have to go to bed by eight 30. Cause otherwise my sleep, all this, I had all these rules and I was still eating really healthy. Um, I wouldn't go to restaurants, even though I had like been working on getting rid of the food stuff. I was still very fearful of the symptoms, you know? Um, so I didn't want to go out to eat because you know, I didn't want it to be too stimulating. And because I still was like, even though I had mind body, I felt like I had to like baby my nervous system, like everything had to be like introduced, like in baby steps. And um, it, does that make sense? Like, you know, I was, yeah. I was babying my nervous system because I was scared of the symptoms. Um, And that comes from the belief that my nervous system is all messed up. Yes. And that's what I thought my nervous system was messed up. Um, and even though I had gotten better, like I believed it was mind body, I, I'm like, well, my mind body's messed up. Like mine doesn't work like regular people's. It's, it's not, it's not good. It can't handle stress. Like I can't handle stress now. It's like, it's broken somehow from COVID. Like COVID must have messed up my nervous system. Yeah. So you know, if I can just jump in. Yes. The control center for the nervous system is the brain. Right. And it's actually the brain is part of the nervous system, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so if the brain is operating on misinformation, the belief that Correct. you're broken, that COVID did this to me and mm -hmm. I'm all messed up, the brain mm -hmm. is going to very much operate as if you are broken. And it did. Yep. Right. Um, so, yeah, the brain is just operating on misinformation and fear. Yes. But it yep. wasn't broken at all. It was working perfectly, flawlessly, actually. Yep. Yep. It was just on a you know volume ten, hyper yep. hyper aware, hyper stimulated, but it was working flawlessly. It was just mm -hmm. given the wrong computer program to run, which is oh my goodness, everything's horrible. I'm in danger. Mm -hmm. Yep. So and you. that's yep. That's what all like my coach was telling me, and I also I had um an actual like ther like counselor like psychiatrist or psychologist I'm not sure the one that you talked to like a counselor that I worked with and she was even explaining me all that to me my neurologist was like told me you have a software problem like but that didn't help you know like I'm like okay it's a problem with the software so right. but which is scary because right? it's like how do you fix it um, but what happened was my husband kind of just had come to me after that last relapse and he'd lost hope that I was ever going to get better and our life was miserable um and he's like, I don't know if I can do like, I don't know if we can be together. Sorry, I'm going to like, um, no, that's okay. and, wow. you know, I just, and they're like, he's like, I've been, you know, talking to my friends and like old friends. And he's like, I just don't know if I can live like this. I don't know if I can do this. And wow. in that like night, um, I realized that I had to decide like what I valued more, like my obsession with being ill or my family. And, um, you know, I like suddenly I was sitting there in the bath and I was just like, you know what? Like, I don't care anymore. I don't care what symptoms, like I'm not doing this anymore. I'm not living my life like this. And I got so sick after that, like just beyond sick after that, like I could not eat. And 
But I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to work and I don't care. I'm going to sip my little baby smoothies. And like, who cares if I have to eat smoothies forever? Like, who cares? And I just started being like, who cares for everything? And my heart was racing. And I'm like, I don't care. Like, I don't care that my heart's racing. I don't care if I eat smoothies. I don't care if I eat oatmeal. And um, I was sick like that for maybe three days. And I remember even like I went to a party with my husband and I had wine and I was like, I don't care. Like I'm going to drink and live normal. Like I couldn't have that much wine because I was already nauseous, but I did it. And, um, and then that weekend I was sick and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to a restaurant and I ate a little bit of, and I got a spicy thing. I was like, I'm just done. I'm done. Like I'm not sick. They've scoped me. There's no inflammation in my stomach. I can do whatever I want and I don't care how I feel. And then, um, it took like three days and then I was better just like a hundred percent. And I don't like, it never came back. Um, it, and that's not true because it does come back, but not being sick. So like, if I get anxious, I get a stomach ache, but I always did like my whole life. That's not new, but now I'm not afraid of the stomach ache. So I'm like, oh yeah, no, I'm stressed out. I have a stomach ache. Cool. And I go to work or I take care of my baby or I lay down, you know, sometimes you just want to lay down and that's fine too. If you're really stressed out, like you just live, like, I just live like I'm not sick and I don't, it's like, When I was trying to manage my nervous system, Mm -hmm. I was so obsessed with myself that I couldn't see anybody else and like what I was doing. And when I finally opened my eyes and like came out of the self-obsession with my disease and managing, and it was like, I, like a me, 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 me thing, like all I, and I don't, but it was, it was all about me and my disease and how is everybody else going to help me get better? Cause my problems are so bad when I finally stepped out of that and saw like everything else, it, it just was like so easy to get better. And I don't know if that's like a helps people or not, but it was my kind of experience. You basically hit your head on the wall that said, I'm done. I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I'm just mm-hmm. going to play that game anymore. Yeah. Well, and I didn't care. I'm like, well, I, if I am sick and tired, fine. You know, that was really like, it wasn't, it was like, I decided to, cause I'd been sick of being sick the whole time. And I was always like, oh, I'm just going to be sick and tired of this. And I'm going to manage it so well that I'm going to get better. And then I finally said, you know what, you can be as sick as you want. And you're not like, you are not controlling me anymore. Whoever like the, you know, the sim like you as the symptoms, but I was like, I do not care. Mm -hmm. how much you scream like I'm going to go to the restaurant I'm going to go to the party I'm going to get up and take care of my kid even if I'm puking the whole time I'm still going to go and um and then it just it just stopped okay so what do you think um that decision did that caused your brain to turn off the symptoms I have my theory but Yeah. So I stopped fearing them. I stopped Mm -hmm. all medications. I stopped all doctors. Um, I did have to wean off one of the medications pretty slowly, which was its own saga. It that had issues, but, um, but once I was off all meds, off all the supplement, I stopped everything. Like, you know, I don't even take, you know, I'll take one Zyrtec now, you know, like if I have allergies, but I don't take anything. I stopped going to doctors. I stopped, um, Another thing, when I was really sick, like, anytime I'd meet anyone, like, it was within, like, three minutes, I'd tell them, well, I'm really sick, and I would, like, tell them, like, or I'm, like, better, but I used to be sick. I well, just, I don't talk story. about it. Yeah, I wanted to tell the story. I wanted the story to mean something, to be part of who, it was part of who I was. Like, my recovery was part of who I was, and I, like, dreamed of sharing my recovery story, and it had to be this big meaning and I wanted to become a coach and you know all this stuff like it was so near and dear to me and then I stopped it stopped being a part of me so I don't even think about it like um when I was at like a party the other day and um someone said like oh blah 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 like when you're sick and I was like I was sick and then I was like oh yeah I was sick a long time like three years wasn't I and then um like you I forgot it Mm -hmm. you know and I think when it's still a part of you when like the recovery means like it meant so much to me to recover. Like it had, I had to find something else that meant more to me than the illness and the recovery and the symptoms. Um, 
But then even just like five or so months ago, like I've probably been better for about a year fully. Um, but about five right. months ago, my husband um asked me like why I didn't go to yoga anymore. I used to teach hot yoga mm -hmm. and before I got pregnant. And I was like, oh, I don't know. Like I think I might pass out if I go. And he's like, you still have a a fear. And he's like, yep. you have to go. He's like, you ha and so I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't think I could. I'm like, they told me that it's really bad, you know, and they told me like, you'll probably never do yoga again because of the up and down and you can't but go in. They hot told you all sorts of crap. That wasn't, they true. did. Right. The doctors. And then I was like, you know what? You're right. And I went to the hot yoga class and I was fine. And, um, it was perfectly fine. I mean, I like hadn't gone, but I did a class in like a heated room of about 98 degrees. And they told me when I first got this like pots thing that I couldn't be in heat and I couldn't take baths and, you know, I could, I had to sleep with my bed elevated and all these rules. And, um, those were making me insane. Like all the rules you had to follow and you have to eat small meals. Like you can't eat big meals. Cause then you'll get, yeah, it was just all these rules. And, you know, unfortunately in my nervous system, like the rules were more triggering than anything. Like I hate following rules. And well, not only that, but rules that say, I'm fragile, easily mm -hmm. screwed up. And if I don't follow the rules, fear, 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 danger, 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 yeah. symptoms are going to come. So now I'm terrified of not following the rules. Oh, I know. It keeps yep. the whole system just yep. on volume 10. Yes. Yep, it does. Um, And so I think just, you know, and you don't have to like, I wasn't really able, like when I was first getting better, I don't think like, you know, um, like six months in, I don't know if I could have done what I did and just stop everything. Like, because I had been working towards that already, but it was just kind of like that last relapse, but it's okay to like do things in baby steps too. Cause sometimes I think if you're so fearful of like cutting everything off, but I mean, if you've like, for sure have a mind body condition, you don't really need anything to fix it. Like and that's what I find. You don't need to meditate. You don't need a brain program. You don't need anything. You just need to literally like live your life in a way that makes you happy or in a way that you feel you need to. Like I needed to go back to work. We were draining our retirement account, you know, like sure. that was stressful. Right. So, you know, um, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. But, but, oh, but it's like, okay to do it in baby steps too, you know, like, sure. I don't know. If I was really scared of going to like hot yoga, I could have done it slow. You know, I could have started with a little bit here and I'd been doing like yoga without the heat for a while. So I kind of did it in baby steps anyway. Yeah. I mean, we want to make sure that we're not terrifying ourselves by trying to get back to life because if we are yes. it's not going to go as smoothly as if we can kind of ease into it with right. a quiet confidence to us. Right. And I think like, I think also it is the fact that like, I stopped being afraid of the symptom. Like, that's really what changed and why I got better is I, I had always up to the time approached it of like, if I get symptoms, I'm failing. If I get symptoms back, I did something wrong. If the symptoms come back, it's going to be terrible. You know, there's all this like, if, and then I finally made the decisions, like if the symptoms come back, who cares? And that was really the turning point. I love point. that. Yeah. yeah. So, cause like you can't, like, you're going to get the symptoms cause we all get them. Like the nervous system symptoms are normal things that we have that then become sensitized. Right. And so I learned a lot about it too. It's like how I equate it is like, if you're in a room full of bees, like your skin is going to be crawling, you know, and you're going to feel like bees are crawling all over you. Right. Like, and you're going to be like, Oh my gosh, there's bees right. and you feel everything because your nervous system is sensitized. It's not broken. It's you're terrified of getting stung by a bee. Volume is turned up. So it's like that. So like I get a queasy stomach from stress, but if I start to be obsessed with my queasy stomach, then it, it becomes a two week flu, you know? So it, it's just, but it's just like that. It's the same as like the bee analogy, Right. But like for the, everything. So like if you're afraid of standing up, your heart rate's going to go up and then you get more and more afraid and then it gets worse and worse and worse. But like even today, like my heart rate, if I take it at home, it's normal. It's in the 70s. But if I go to a doctor and they take it, it's always high. 
And I think it'll be like that forever because I just got so like. It's a white lab coat syndrome. Yeah. A lot of people yep. have that with blood pressure, heart rate, mm -hmm. sometimes even glucose, you know, and mm -hmm. with stress. And if you're stressed out about getting your glucose checked, because you might be thinking, what if I'm pre-diabetes or something, the yeah. stress can raise the glucose. Right. Yeah. In the moment. <clears throat> so you mentioned at some point that you were watching my daily videos for a while. Yes. How did that mix in with your decision to just say i'm gonna i'm gonna live life and i don't care if symptoms show like, like yeah so once i living, find how did that i'm help? trying to it helped a lot i'm trying to think of when i found you because i watched you like every day for about a year um probably from like being a year and a half to two and a half years sick um i don't remember how i found you um but it was probably through like a nicole Sachs, you know like you just see everybody. So eventually I got into your Facebook group and I started watching your videos. And I just remember it was like, um, for me with the food stuff, cause I'd only been eating 30 foods and I started watching your videos and it's kind of like, nothing's wrong. Like go back to life, you know, fear of it makes it worse. Um, mm -hmm. the misinformation. And I'm like, you know, maybe those allergy tests weren't, maybe that is m misinformation. Like, because I took two allergy tests and they were different each time. And I was like, well, maybe it's not right. Like, maybe I'm not allergic to any of these. I'm like, or I'm just allergic to everything, but not really. Like my body's just reacting to everything because of this mind body thing. So it's just sure. inflammation with everything. And I'm like, I bet I'm not allergic. So I think I started like eating foods. Like, um, I don't, you know, I had to introduce them all like slow. Cause back then I was so fearful of getting sick, but I think like, I ate like ground turkey, which I was like, had histamine. So I was like, okay, well, I'm going to sprinkle like a tad of turkey into a salad, but mix it in so I can't see it and see if I get sick. And I like, didn't get sick. And then I'm like, I'm going to eat a turkey meatball. And I ate it and I didn't get sick. And I'm like, well, maybe this whole histamine thing is crap. And I'm going to eat, you know, something else with like an avocado. And I ate that and I didn't get sick. And it was like, after I had started thinking of like, it's probably like those allergy tests probably weren't real. And then I'm like, well, if that wasn't real, like what else might not be real? Um, and then I had like a friend who she had like POTS too. And she went for this whole tilt table test and they, they made her stop all her medications, cold Turkey, which already is going to make you sick. And then they did this ridiculous test where they told her like, oh, well, you might throw up and all these things. And they put her on a table and tilted her and her heart rate went up to like 120, which I don't even think is that high. And they're like, and then she like sent me the report and she's like, look, I have POTS. And I'm like, but it says like, you could have POTS or you could have anxiety or you could have dehydration. That's what the report said. And I'm like, and they told you not to drink water all day. So I'm like, this is the stupidest test I've ever seen. And then I started to think that POTS might not be like, that real, like that maybe POTS could just be anxiety. And um, not that I don't want to take away like from people who, I don't know, who've had it their whole lives, like, you know, yeah. but- well, Dismissing the diagnosis, but yeah. in my experience, the vast number of people who I've come across who were given that medical label of POTS, mm -hmm. they were just a series of symptoms that were created by a brain perceiving danger. Right. The danger, if the danger is, oh my goodness, she's standing up, heart rate goes faster. Mm -hmm. I'm dizzy, right? And that can become learned and conditioned. So now you got to get up and mm -hmm. you're fearful of it. You expect it. And what the brain expects, it can literally create out of nothing. There's not an expectation. Correct. Yep. And that's kind of what I had. And then I became fairly obsessed with like monitoring my heart. Not fair. I became very obsessed with monitoring yeah. my heart rates. And because um, it was something that like everything anybody said to me, I turned into this huge like Bible of how, so I saw something about how, like if the heart rate goes over a hundred, like that causes adrenaline symptoms, which makes you like explained all these symptoms I was having. So I'm like, well, I can't keep my heart rate over under a hundred. So then I thought I just had to like lay there and breathe. So I was spending six hours a day in bed trying to breathe and like lower my heart rate. Um, which was very not, it was very unhelpful, but I was just like, cause they're like, if you can't calm your nervous system, you'll never get better. 
if you can't do this, you'll never get back. You know, all this stuff that I like I hate that stuff. I hate that stuff. It's, I know. It's, you're broken. You're broken. You're broken. You need to yeah. fix it my way. And my way includes you laying still in bed for six hours a day. Like, yeah. don't, don't overstimulate yourself. Don't tax yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't exhaust yourself. And okay. then what would I do? Well, I'd like do it. Don't, don't live. Right. And then I would do that. I'd lay there for six hours and then I would get my heart rate monitor and stand up and my heart rate would go up and I'd be like, well, it didn't work. I must be doing it wrong. Something's wrong with me. I'm not breathing right. So then I would try to like refine the breathing. It's, um, There was this it's actually, a it's a fixing this, mode. Mm -hmm, this book by Nicola, Nicola Bird, someone told me to read. And um, at the time I was so angry that I read it because I found it so unhelpful, um, but actually like has the answers to everything um, now that I'm better. But there's this quote from her. I think it's, it's called A Little Peace of Mind by Nicola Bird. And the one quote that I always like, I knew if I could figure this out, I would get better. And she's like, it, imagine that you don't have a left leg and you want to walk. So you do all these exercises at hopping and you get really good at, and you strengthen your right leg and you're so good at hopping and you do your hopping exercises every day. And then somebody comes up to you and is like, Morgan, you, you have a left leg. And then you're like, well, what? Like you could just walk. You have a left leg and you look down and you see the left leg and you walk. And I was like, that's like, I need to figure that out to get better. And like it, but it doesn't, it's not something you can even figure out just one day. Like you just see your leg and you're just kind of go with it. And I, I know I don't, it might make sense to you. It didn't make any sense to me when I was sick, but it like, now I'm just like, oh yeah, no, you just, you have a left leg. There's nothing wrong with you. Yeah, I kind of call that in this world um, mm -hmm. the holy shit moment. Right. Which is yes. the moment that goes, I've been working so darn hard to fix myself, but holy shit, I'm not actually broken. There's right. not a darn thing wrong with me. That's the holy shit moment. Yeah. And so the holy crap moment, if you want to be more, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, and that, that's, that's what it is. Like, just you could walk and... um. And I think though with mind body, like it is hard at first because you have to go through first the medical phase. And then I think a lot of people go through the naturopathy phase and then you find them. And a lot of the naturopaths recommend mind body work too, but it's all under the skies of like, so my mind body, like my mind is broken. And I think till you can get out of like, I have to fix my nervous system. You're stuck in this rut of managing and the management of it perpetuates it. Yeah, of course, because it yeah. comes from the premise that you're broken and I got to mm -hmm. fix something. And if your brain thinks you're broken, it will it will manage the symptoms as if you're broken. Yes. And then and it just kind of keeps. Called, yeah, there's something called predictive coding, mm -hmm. which means if you expect something, the brain can literally create it out of thin air. Yeah. So. Yeah, I had that. Basically, every symptom I would read about, I would get for a while. That's how I ended up like, mm -hmm. you know just with so many and I don't want to like list them all because it's just like too much and, but it was it was just ridiculous at a time I remember I like went to my neurologist and I had written all my symptoms and like I ran out of room so I like wrote them around the edges because I felt like he had to know every single symptom I had and he kind of like looked at it and he's like yeah no I think like you're fine I think you need to see a counselor <laughs> like basically and I was like I don't think they can fix me I'm not crazy but like but that's essentially what he insinuated was, I mm -hmm. don't have a medical solution. So maybe right. the psychological problem. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, and it was to some extent like it, you know, that all the symptoms were very real. Exactly. But I was like. But you weren't hurt. sick. You had, you did not have a disease. And I no. know you used that word a few times earlier. So for the mm -hmm. audience. Uh, yes. TMS is not a disease. TMS is a wonderful computer operating on misinformation and fear. And when yes. we correct the information, we dial down the fear, the system works better. We don't have to fix our nervous system. The nervous system's already working perfectly. It's just mm -hmm. working on bad data. And when we fix mm -hmm. that, it takes care of itself. We don't have to rewire the brain. It takes care of that for us. You don't it have, does. You don't have to get caught up in those details of... I got a broken brain that I have to fix. I got a broken amygdala or limbic system or whatever. Because yes. all that does is terrify you that 
I'm screwed up. I'm broken. And if you have mm -hmm. an experience that causes symptoms to jump, you'll say, see, there's that broken system. Right. Yep. And that's, I was caught in that for like two years, that exact cycle. Um, and I don't know if I ever would have gotten out of it. Like if my husband hadn't pushed, you know, I think if like, I'm like, you know, it, it sucked that we had like marital stress, but I also like, am very thankful. Cause I feel like if he was extra, like supportive and attentive and like, Oh, let me get you everything. And you look, which he was at the beginning, but then he's just like, I can't do this anymore. And I think without that moment, I probably would have stayed stuck because I just would have continued babying myself. So I kind of am grateful to him for pushing me through it. And then, you know, we were able to work through that later and, um, it just, you know, things happen for a reason. Of course. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, <clears throat> a lot of people, if you were to tell them while they're in it, that this is a gift, they'd think mm -hmm. you're not. You're crazy, Dan. Are you kidding me? How is this a gift? It's horrible. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, you can look back and say, well, look at everything I've learned about right. myself, about the brain, the nervous system, symptoms. Mm -hmm. else. It was a gift. It yeah. was a nice gift when you got it. You were like, that's like getting socks on Christmas. It's like, I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, when you, you know, your car breaks down, your feet are cold. It was pretty nice to have. Yeah. <laughs> Horrible. And like, Horrible. Well, and, right. And one of the nice things is that like, I had a lot of TMS symptoms prior to this, which are all pretty much gone too. Like I used to have to like go, like I was really terrified of like, having to pee like I would have to pee like every hour or every half hour just constantly all day and that just like went away pretty much on its own like yeah, that yeah. was all a TMS thing from before I would have like chronic neck pain which never bothered me but that's got you know like all these other symptoms um from my childhood like I had them since I can remember they all yeah. those have all like mostly gone away so it's like it is kind of a gift because I was going to get this from something like I just had that person, like I had it from childhood, you know, the right, you know, kind of TMS type of childhood and all this stuff that I was probably going to get some, some sort of explosion at some point in my life. And, you know, I don't know, I think having a baby and all that kind of well, COVID and a baby at the same time and yep. your husband having to work because needed to bring, you know, bring the money home and you were kind mm -hmm. of thrown and then all of a sudden you start getting sick and now you're doubly on your own because you're like, yep. I need help, but. But I don't have help. I don't have help. And you're literally yep. crawling around. And so I honor you for making it through, for Dead. having the fortitude, the strength, frankly, the bravery. Mm -hmm. um, and you showed up for yourself when the doctors couldn't or wouldn't couldn't is more the word they didn't have the knowledge to be able to help you right and oh, everyone well people but they just mm -hmm. didn't have the knowledge and they did and they even said that they would just be like you know we don't know about covid like it's very new they're like it probably in 10 years we'll be able to help you and i was like oh great like <laughs> i'm not waiting yeah yeah and they were like one of them he prescribed me this medication and then like it was a steroid and my kid was in daycare Cause I like put her in daycare, even though I was home, because I'm like, I have to lay down here and not be stimulated all day. Um, so like I were paying for my kid to be in daycare when I should have been taking care of her because I was home. Right. Um, but they, she was in daycare getting all these colds and I was on the steroid getting colds now, like every other week getting a vi like a different virus. I think one time we got tested and we had like four viruses in our system and like, it was ridiculous. And then I asked the doctor, like, I think steroids lower your immune system, right? Because you can like Google it and it says they do. And he's like, oh, we just don't really know about the effects of medicine. And I'm like, I just don't know how to trust like any of you. Why anymore. are you prescribing it if you don't know what it does? Yeah. Well, he's like, we're using it like for this pots in an off label way. And he's like, we don't really know how it, and I'm like, well, then I really should have like never been on it. Like, you yeah. know, and that was when I just decided to wean myself off of it but well, good for you. And so mm -hmm. how are you doing these days? I'm great. Yeah. So I work, um, my kid, my baby, she, well, she's gonna be four next month now. Yes. <laughs> so she's 
So I'm planning her birthday party. I work as a physical therapist full time, um, take care of her in the afternoons. I'm back to exercising. You know, I just live like I, I'm just normal. Like there's nothing I can't do. Um, yeah, all done. All done. Um, if I have a lot of stress, I'll get a stomach ache, you know, or a headache. And then um, it's gone, you know, it's gone when I the next day or in a few but hours. You reckon but that's normal. You recognize it and you go, I don't need to be concerned. Yeah. And it, it, well, I had that before, you know, that's my normal. So I wouldn't expect not to get a stomach ache. Um, but I'm not like, I don't fear anything. And actually even like now with like getting sick, like viruses and stuff, I feel like I used to get so sick and now I'm like, oh, I'm sick. Like I'm going to do what I have to do anyway. And I'll rest if I need to, like I listen to my body, but I don't like even baby myself now with viruses. Not that like I'm telling people like push through stuff. I just like I'm not afraid of symptoms at all anymore. Like even like I had a flu and I was so nauseous and I'm like, eh, like I don't care. I'll be nauseous till I'm not. Like I'm still gonna eat, you know, if like I want to eat. Like I just right. I just do whatever I want to do and then like listen to my body when I need to. But I feel like some of the mind body stuff like tells you, you have to get so good at listening to your body's cues and all this stuff. And like that becomes its own stress. Like you're trying to but sometimes figure it all the body, out. And... Yeah. But sometimes the body is listening to fear mm -hmm. and the body is reacting as if the fear is actual danger. Yeah. And so listening to your body, it might be like, well, my body's screaming at me. Right. So how does that benefit me? No, I think, I think we want to talk to our brain. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, a lot of people say, listen to your body. And sometimes it's accurate. You know, you get a real mm -hmm. illness, a cold, a flu, whatever, and you're exhausted and you're, you know, you're all congested. Mm -hmm. yeah, your body, take care of yourself, hydrate, eat right. food, rest. But, but like, I think that I like after COVID, I got this fear of, oh, if you push through a virus, you're going to get long COVID again. And now I'm like, no, like if you have to do something and you're sick, you can just do it. And then you'll go to sleep and you'll still get better. Even if like, you know, like, I don't know, you have to like, what would you have to do when you have to virus? Like you have to do a little bit of work or you have to do some housework or like get up and do that. Like if you have to do it, it's not going to make you sick longer. It's no. not like ruining anything. And I think learning I'm that tired. too, I've gone. Yeah. You might be tired. And Yep. And then another thing I forgot to mention was all like the Facebook groups like are horrible. Um, not like the the mind body ones are good. So to get I stopped going on everything. I like, like even the mind body things I stopped every like because I was in all these COVID groups. And all these mind body groups and all this like and I'd wake up and my Facebook would have like 15 notifications and it all be like, COVID, 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 mind, body, mind, body, mind, body. And I eventually just like unfollowed all of them. And I, um, not that like it's bad, but I kind of just stopped talking to people about it. Like I had a lot of long COVID like friends that I talked to and we kind of all even mutually agreed. Like we all need to stop. All we're doing is making each other sick because mm -hmm. you start comparing like, oh, well, why are you having a good day? And I'm not, or, you know, why are you better than me? And it's just all this comparison and competitiveness was happening. And, um, and so stopping all that, and then any symptom you read, or I read, I was basically getting, um, and all the groups are very, very fear-based. And even in the mind body groups, there's a lot of people asking, like, I don't know, is this mind body or isn't it? And like, anything I would read like that could trigger me. Doubt, mm -hmm. Doubt shows up. Yep. Even there was like a mind body interview, like, which is positive. It was like a recovery story. But then at the end, she talked about how she ate really healthy and ate like yogurt and like chai seeds and blueberries. And I was like, why did she have to eat health? And that triggered me, you know, it's like, eventually, like, I don't get triggered now like that. But I had to like, take yeah. a step back from all the talk about it and about recovery in order to let myself like kind of work through all that and like, yeah, finally believe that I wouldn't get triggered you know i was so afraid of triggers sure. um and then they would happen all the time so yeah so your story is perfect a perfect example of the things you were doing thinking and saying stopping talking about symptoms exiting those groups was 
providing consistent, credible evidence that you were actually safe, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And when the brain felt safe, it shut off symptoms. Mm -hmm. But what you've really shown in action was that it's all about recovering from fear, conscious yes. and unconscious fear. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's not all conscious because I have a lot of people that go, I know all about TMS and I'm not as afraid. So, so why do I still have symptoms? Well, the subconscious is still doing its job to keep you safe and keep those alarms it's going. And it's because you care that you have symptoms. Yeah. Like if you like if you mm -hmm. are like, why do I still have symptoms? You're not better yet. It's it's when you're like, okay, like so, I have symptoms, but I don't like I don't care. And not even I don't care, just like so what? like getting yeah. the word like symptoms out of your head. Like that word in itself, I think like you're still listing things, like just being like, Oh, I don't know, I have a headache today. Oh well. Take an but, aspirin and move but, on. <laughs> but that is an example of another concept I've been teaching for years. Mm -hmm. Indifference. Right. Be indifferent right. to the symptoms because <clears throat> you know what causes them and you know that applies to you. So what are you all upset about? Mm -hmm. You can take that eh, approach. Oh, I have yep. symptoms. Eh. Yep. Which basically says whatever. So what? Don't care. Mm -hmm. And so yep. that was you got to the point where you were able to decide I'm going to be indifferent whether mm -hmm. they're there or not. Yeah. And quickly. And it was that, like, and it, it was pretty extreme. Like I kind of, I had been trying to live so healthy and then I was like, you know what? I'm not like, and I don't recommend living unhealthy, but I was like, I'm going to live unhealthy. So I'm like, I'm going to drink like wine and I'm going to eat McDonald's and if I get sick, I get sick. And like, I didn't get sick. And then I'm like, I bet I could eat other fast food and I could. And then like, obviously don't live like that, but it was suddenly like this realization that like all that stuff, everyone said, Oh, like this is making you sick. That is making you sick. None of that was making me sick. Here. Like, is it better to live healthy? Yes. But sure. living unhealthy isn't giving you mind body symptoms, like on its own. Obviously if you're only eating McDonald's, like all that you're going to have like health right. problems but not the mind body health problems like then you're gonna have actual test results and stuff wrong with you so um but yeah like having a glass of wine isn't making you sick eating one unhealthy meal isn't giving you it's not like keeping you sick well that's the thing i mean there are certain lifestyle things that we all do at varying times in our lives mm -hmm. but the symptoms and the the intensity and how extreme they are has nothing to do with what you had for lunch. No, it doesn't. Right? And, and th there's no way something you had at lunch could be so toxic to your symptom that your heart rate jumps to 150 or that you get dizzy right. the minute you stand up or right. that you get nauseous and throw up violently or what, like. Mm -hmm. Right. And and we're told by the naturopaths and, and all these people that try to mm -hmm. figure you out under the microscope and say, yep. We have to fix this at a macrobiology level because mm -hmm. you're you're broken, your gut's destroyed, yep. broken. You've been like this your whole life. It's just catching up to you. Broken, broken story, story. Yep, yep, all and, that. And we buy into it and we believe it because we mm -hmm. don't know what else to believe. And yeah. So you were blessed that you not only heard about Sarno and read about it, but you were able to make the connection between what he was talking about and your completely different set of symptoms because you weren't a back pain person. You weren't a pain specific person, you know, nope. other stuff going on, but you still said, this makes sense. Yeah. And I'm going to follow this intuition and go down that path. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it was that, that really made the shift for you because had you yep. stayed in the medical world, you'd probably still be in it. Right. And it helped having your videos every morning, though, because that gave, gave me like a sense of like, just this reminder, you know, like, I would listen and it'd be, always be like, I, I can't remember all the videos. because I feel like I haven't, I haven't watched one probably at least a year now, because I've been better. And then, you know, I'm not gonna keep telling myself I'm sick by listening to videos. So I just stopped everything. Um, But yeah, when no, it was always helpful, like, you know, the indifference and all of that. And, um, Learning to be indifferent to the symptoms probably is the hardest part. Um, yeah. 
because it is for so long. I'm like, I'm doing all this. Why aren't I better? I've known about mind body for two years. Why aren't I better? Why are they better? You know, like, why do I have symptoms? I don't under, you know, and I would like email all these different coaches. Like I'm sure I emailed you and I would email like all these people, you know, just for them to tell me, you know, yes, POS is mind body. Yes. That, you know, cause I wanted all that reassurance. Um, but the seeking reassurance was like addictive, right? Cause you get that dopamine rush when they say, okay, it's my, and you're like, okay, good. I'm okay. But then you just want someone else to tell you. So I had to kind of let all that go and like to right. truly become indifferent and not be like, why do I have symptoms? I'm doing everything right. To, but to be like, I'm living my life and I might have a stomach ache, but like, oh, well, or I might have this, yeah. but oh, well, and like to minimizing, like, instead of saying, oh, I'm nauseous and I'm this and that I'm like, I, like my stomach hurts, you know, like taking it down you from this minimize level. Of is right. That's a good, yeah. that's a good term. Yeah. Indifference. You know, I've said a while ago, indifference is a decision you can make. Mm -hmm. And what you've proven is I'm going to think, act and behave as if I don't care. And when you yeah. do that consistently, the brain's like, well, she really doesn't care. Yes. And I think one thing I found too was like the brain wants you to think the symptoms, whatever, are, are more debilitating than they are. Like, you know, I really thought that I couldn't stand or couldn't do all these things. And then nothing changed about my symptoms. I still had them all the same. And I just did think, you know, slow, you know, in the even in the beginning, but I suddenly realized like, well, there's no reason that I can't stand. There's no reason that I can't leave the house. There's no reason that I can't, you know, do these things. Um, yeah. Even if I'm having the symptoms, like it just doesn't matter, but it takes a while. Like you do have to kind of get out of the fear. And I think for like, that's the hardest part because fear is trying to protect you. And yeah. And you said the brain wants you to believe you're more debilitated, that the symptoms are more debilitating. Are. But here's the deal. I mean, the brain's mm -hmm. primary job is safety and survival. So it's not doing right. anything to you to mess with you or harm you or that's true your life. It is simply perceiving danger incorrectly and saying sure. the best way to stay safe is to lay in bed for six hours. Right. Right. And right. Mm -hmm. negative thoughts the what if the what if maybe the doctor missed yes. something I need to be careful i have to figure this out let me go research even those oh, negative yeah. thoughts mm -hmm. just another symptom of the brain perceiving danger it's just yeah. the brain trying to keep you safe by saying hey morgan did you think of this did you think of that well maybe we need to do this or do that mm -hmm. the brain trying to keep you safe because it's perceiving danger right but it's still so our brains are not working against us. It may seem like that. It may feel like that. That's true. My brain is doing this to me. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's just woefully misinformed. You're right. Yeah. It's and like then... taking directions on the highway from somebody who doesn't know the roads. Right. It's not going to get to where you need to get to because they don't know how to tell you to get there. Your brain doesn't understand how mm -hmm. this works. And it's just believing all those messages that you're broken, you're messed up, everything else. I don't know how many doctors you've been to, but every one of them was like, you're you're broken here, 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 and here. Then you mm -hmm. do your research and you say, oh yeah, there's eight more reasons why I'm broken. Oh no, yep. somebody else had this symptom, then they got those symptoms. Oh no, I might get them too. And then sure enough, you do. And it's like, holy crap, I'm completely broken. I know. I feel like you just did like a monologue that was like constantly playing in my head. Like the whole, you know, that's like literally what it was and just cycling through that. But that monologue is not unique to you. Nope. <laughs> no, no it's people. not. So many people. It doesn't matter if you just got, you know, general run of the mill back pain or 30 symptoms like you had. The same monologue runs because the brain is perceiving danger and it's doing it what it can. So, yeah, that monologue mm -hmm. is dead on because I've heard it countless times from people. Yep. And so yep, the solution it is, is overcoming fear with accurate knowledge of what's going on. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I think indifference kind of happens organically. Like the mm -hmm. less fearful you are, the less terrified you are, the more able to reassure yourself you are, you'll eventually get to the point where you know what's going on, you know it applies to you, so why should I be bothered by this? So whatever, so what? Eh, don't care. Mm -hmm. I think that organically happens, but you've just proven 
that at somewhere during that journey, you can actually make a decision and go, I'm not going to play this game anymore. I'm not yeah. going to care. And I'm yeah. going to let it do its thing. And so I think that's a very hopeful message for people who say, I can't get to indifference. Yeah. I think but it was I, like, yeah. For, yeah, I think for me, it was like, I finally was forced by, you know, I don't know who, you know, God, the universe, together whatever. Or, or lose it. Yeah. yeah. I was, I found something I cared more about than the illness. And, um, yes. Make living your life more important than mon managing, monitoring yeah. and fixing your symptoms. Yes. Did and exactly that. Unfortunately, yeah. it came to the point where, you know, the relationship it was forced was, upon me. Yep. Yeah, it was forced, but mm -hmm. in hindsight, what a gift, because now, right. now you guys have the common bond of, wow, look what we went through and we're still here. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Well, wonderful wonderful outcome i'm so yes. proud of you and happy for you and thank you yeah and thank you for all your videos because that really every morning i would sit there with my coffee and like wake my baby up and i'd watch the video like 10 it was like perfect short like not too much so it, that was a big help you know when i was still in the fear and it would help break me out of that monologue so that's like you helped like stop every morning i'd wake up with that monologue and then your videos would help be like, no, you know, stop. So well, you back away from the ledge. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yep. Every and you gotta do it every day for a while till you kind of just are able to find the level of indifference, you know, and calm and all that. I talk a lot about consistent messages of safety. And yes, the daily videos literally are a consistent message of safety that you're okay, you're mm -hmm. gonna be able to do this. I trust, I believe in you. I know you can do it. Other people have done it too. And here's how it works and mm -hmm. you know, formulaic process. And it's really not that complex. Yeah. And or, so, something that helped me too was going back to work. Like the, the, the doctors told me to go back to work in the beginning, you know, and they're like, that'll make you better. And I'm like, oh, you guys are insane. I can't work. Um, but like going back to work, actually, like I had to kind of, I'd been out of work for three years. I had to kind of relearn things and like, that too was like just flipping out of the fear monologue into, okay, how do I do this job? I need to learn this. And then I was like, Hey, I've been doing this and I haven't been like, I've been fine. And then you're suddenly like, if I can work, like I must be healthy. Right. And you kind of, but the reason also is because if you're sitting at home, the only thing you're doing is thinking about your symptoms, monitoring them, trying to fix them, trying to figure it out, research, Maybe the doctors missed something. Monologue, monologue, monologue. Yes. But when yep. you're at work, you're like, I don't have time to do all that mental don't. gymnastics over my illness. I got to work. I got stuff to do. Right. And so when you engage your brain in something else besides the symptoms, virtually anything else besides your symptoms, yep. the brain goes, Morgan must That's be so fine true. because she's actually focusing on work. Yeah. So must be all right. Right. So all of this stuff works together. The mm -hmm. mind, the difference, engaging your brain in something else, making a decision, committing to it, overcoming the fear, starting to resume activities, starting to resume eating more normal foods. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, it all comes together. Mm -hmm. All the things that I talk about every day, you pulled together. Maybe yeah. actually, maybe it all just, you know, you got to find your own way, which is. It took a long time. I mean, it took like probably two years to really pull it all together and like go through periods of being like thinking I was 90% to then, you know, plummeting and, sure. the, you know, it, it, it took a long time with all that. Um, I think if you can get to indifference sooner, mm -hmm. that, you know, that if I could have really been indifferent sooner, I probably would have gotten better faster. But, it, you know, I think that it takes just takes time and when your brain gets really scared and there was it's just like you gotta have grace with yourself too and you know like it's okay to relapse it's okay you know all that's okay and it doesn't mean like you failed or that anything you know you did it wrong and I think that was you know you're not doing anything wrong because you can't really do anything wrong because you're not broken in the first place right so yeah. indifference is a huge message of safety because you're literally saying yeah, I've got this stuff, but I don't care. And your brain's going, well, she doesn't care. Maybe it's not as big of a problem as we thought it was. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. Indifference is ideal. And some people are like, I just can't get there. I care too much. It hurts too much or it's too uncomfortable. Yeah. 
but yeah well and it's hard because I I thought I was gonna die like I thought I was gonna starve to death and die and so like I cared so much about the food and like Mm -hmm. I would like force feed myself and all this stuff like I really thought I was going to starve to death I think I was down to like I mean I probably had a ton more weight to lose but I was down to like 117 pounds and I'm 5'8 like I was that's thin I was like you know very thin and I was like I feel like if I have another two week episode where I can't eat that I'm gonna die and like that's where I was like I like Very. thought I was going to starve to death and that obviously was extreme I think I wasn't gonna starve to death but that is what I thought mm-hmm. and so my brain was trying to like keep me from dying but unfortunately that was you know keeping me very nauseous so it was one of those things where it's just you gotta figure a way to kind of go through it to come out of it <laughs> Yeah, the only way out is through. Uh, mm-hmm. So you did wonderful. Yeah. yeah, thank you. And that, you know, any I'm last, sure there's any last more words to say, or we, Any last words for the audience and anybody else who's struggling? I think, I mean, I think that if you can find the thing in your life that's more important to you mm-hmm. than the illness, and I know the illness isn't important to anybody. Everybody hates it. But hate, like, so I, um, during all this, I, I did talk to a divorce lawyer and this, but it actually helped me with the symptoms a little, cause I wasn't sure if my husband and I were going to stay together. And the divorce lawyer asked me what the opposite of love was. Um, or, and I was like, well, it's hate. And he's like, no, he's like, hate is really like very similarly, like you care a lot about it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, it, he's like the, the opposite of love is apathy or in, indifference. Um, yes. And that's what the divorce lawyer told me. And um, I was like, well, I feel like I hate my husband right now. And he's like, well, maybe like you're not, maybe you need to go home and think on this. And then I was thinking about how I hated my illness. And I was like, huh, maybe I need to think on that. So I know that we all hate our illnesses. We don't, or our TMS, whatever, mind body, but we we hate them. Right. But that is a form of intense like care. And it's almost, you know, cycling around to like this codependency on them. So if you can find a way to to not hate your mind body symptoms and to accept that it's really like a part of you and that it is the your body and your brain doing exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, then you can just be like, well, this is what I do when I, you know when I'm having fear and what can you find that's more important to you than, than those symptoms or that fear? Like it, maybe it's your, your favorite show. Maybe it's your something like a warm cup of tea. I don't know. I don't know what's more important for other people. Like for me, it was my family and actually being present with my baby, not sitting there in my head. Like I'd be with her, but I'd be running through my symptoms and my problems and what can I do to get better? I wasn't present. So actually becoming present, but not like meditating, sitting there, trying to be present, just being present. Paying attention Um, in your hand, you got a baby. Yeah. So if you can find something that, that means more to you than um, to focus on that and to just slowly like let the, the fear monologues, you know, settle down and, um, and to find, you know, to, to find that indifference over time. I think it's hard to find that, Um, but find something more important to you because there are things and your life is more important than the TMS. And virtually anything, even if you don't have a grand thing that is, you know, like your marriage, which is- I know, I know it's kind of, but yeah. It's a very compelling thing, but it doesn't matter. Engage your brain in something else almost mm-hmm. anything else besides the symptoms and that right. into your brain like, while they're they're focused on normal stuff but anything like I couldn't when I was very ill with my symptoms I couldn't even watch a show like I I couldn't do anything like even though I went through life but I couldn't watch tv because I just like I couldn't focus I would have no idea what happened like I couldn't read a book I couldn't like I couldn't do anything because I was so unpresent and stuck in my head so well, you know, if, why? Even, I mean, brain fog and the un- inability to concentrate mm-hmm. because your brain's primary job is safety and survival. And you're trying to yeah. read a book and the brain's going, we're in danger. Get out of that. You know, yeah. get out of the way. Danger, danger. We're trying to survive. You're reading a mm-hmm. book. You're, 
you know, you want me to rec remember that person's name? Are you kidding me? I'm trying right. to stay alive. Right. So the brain doesn't function as it normally would when it was mm -hmm. calm, feeling safe. And so if you've got cognitive issues and you've been terrified, that's why. Mm -hmm. And so when the brain feels safer, the cognitive issues resolve. They really yeah. do. Yeah. But like if if you have those, like if you could just even try to watch your favorite show and like even spend 20 minutes not like like out of the fear and then, you know, what go back and then like try to increase, you know, just mm -hmm. start breaking it up or watch one of your videos. I found it easier to watch the mind body things and stuff, but mainly because my brain is like, oh, she's trying to fix us. So like, we'll allow her to watch that. Like I could read any article on long COVID, but I couldn't read a book, you know? So it was just like- One was mm -hmm. trying to get you to safety. The other yep. was not. Exactly. But like, I guess what, so whatever you can do to take yourself out of fear is what I would recommend. And it's going to be different for everybody, um, you know? And so I, I don't think there's like a simple- one size fits all answer, which is kind of the frustrating part, but well, like to is. just safety, well, safety. Yep. Um, <laughs> but also like, it's okay if you lose safety. Like I, you know, a few months ago had all the like family problems and all this, and I was very stressed out and like having tons of anxiety, like, you know, pretty debilitating anxiety. Um, but I didn't like relapse into illness. Um, you know, I dealt with the anxiety and worked through and then the stressor passed and then I was fine. Um, so you can have stress, like you can be on, like, I wasn't safe in like all the stress, like, but I didn't have to have all those symptoms again. Right. You know, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. Which is a concept I teach all the time. Stress is yeah. not a problem. Life can get very lifey, but you don't have to hurt. You don't have to have symptoms. Yeah. Right. It's but if you do also. Yeah. But if you do, it's also okay. Like I didn't want to eat for one whole day that day. And I was like, Oh, that's just because I'm stressed. Oh, well, I'm not going to die. And that was the difference. Like before I'd be like, I'm going to die if I don't eat today. Now I was like, I'll eat tomorrow. Yeah. It'll be fine. And I did, you know, Brilliant. so, yep. I love it. You've got so many insights, such mm -hmm. a, um... Oh, and what, there's one other thing I do. So, um, cause you know, obviously like for me, like um, I like the idea of being thin or whatever and fit. And when I was very like symptomatic, I was very thin. So now if my symptoms do start to creep back, I'm like, oh, that's good. I'm going to lose a bunch of weight again. Like, awesome. <laughs> and then they go away because it's like, oh, well, that's not even she's like excited that we're back, you know? Yeah. So it doesn't well, work. When you're excited that they're back, what are you not? You're not fearful. Afraid. You're not and I was like, oh, back. good. Yeah. I hope my heart goes really fast so I can lose like an extra few pounds this week. Cause I've gained all my weight back and I'm like, Oh, you know, and then instead of being nauseous then suddenly I'm really hungry and I'm like, Oh, see, it's just like, eventually you can start to kind of play tricks with yourself to like prove, you know, like you can give yourself evidence, like within your own system, like, and like start to take a little more control of the symptoms eventually. Um, but that took a while. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we're going to wrap up. I really appreciate Perfect. you. You've shared some beautiful insights. Uh, it's been a heck of a journey from 30 symptoms to really doing quite well, getting over yeah. all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, I would say no symptoms. So that's beautiful. Yeah. Back to work, raising a kid, marriage is mm -hmm. back together. It sounds like a resounding success to me. Yes, everything's normal again. <laughs> beautiful. Love it. All right. So thank you, Dan. Night, thank you so much for sharing your story with the audience here. And, yes, absolutely. Uh, I appreciate you so much. If you ever should need anything, reach out to me. I'll I will. Yep. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you.